Well, I think, yes. yes. I think um, that the citation says it all, and you will agree with us that she is very distinguished in Jamaica and abroad. And the wonderful thing about Annie Rose uh, is that she's keeping very involved in the association and helping the school and helping our students. And we really do appreciate that. And I'm just going to give her the mic and ask her to say a few words. Just a few words, but I can't tell you how appreciative, how touched I am at this award. Uh, it is, I suppose, always particularly moving when you receive an award from an institution which has been of great importance to you. St. Hughes has meant everything to me. And I listened very carefully to what Dr. Butterfield said earlier. She could have been speaking for me. I see Judy Dallas, one of my former pupils, <laughs> you know, and I. I'm sure it's the same for her. And when I see the extent of her commitment to the Power Students Association, I realize it is the same for her. Basically, we all realize that the school did something for us that could not have been reproduced elsewhere. It changed us, it made us who we are, it helped us to become who we are. Uh, it stimulated our curiosity. That was the first thing. It did not insist on utility. How did I get into the European Union in the first place? How did I become an international civil servant, a European civil servant? And I don't have a European nationality. Well, now I do actually, but I didn't <laughs> then. It is because when I went into sixth form, my whole group moved into sixth form, what usually happened was that all the people who had been doing French before started Spanish and did Spanish to all levels in sixth form. And vice versa, those who had been doing Spanish moved to French. But for that, you needed two extra teachers. And in my particular year, we were short a teacher. Dr. Inez Carnegie, in her inimitable way, said, those girls are going to learn a language. And I know that had it been Korean or Zulu, or whatever, we would have learned a language. She went into the staff room and said, who here is qualified to teach a language? And we had a Scottish teacher who was teaching geography. And she had done her university studies in Germany. She had done a double degree, which is what is typical in Germany, you do two subjects. So she had done geography and she had done German. And so Mrs. Tony said, okay, we're going to put the classes together and they're all going to learn German. And that's what happened. And I was so thrilled with German that although I'm really the class of 65, because that's when I got my A-levels, I said, I want to come back and do German to A-level in a year. And Mrs. Carnegie said, I'm always going to use it. And so it was, I came back. There was nobody to teach me but I could do it on my own. There was a German, a native speaker of German, who could correct me and guide me, though she couldn't teach literature. So I did the literature on my own, but I asked her questions. Yeah. And that was Claire Morgan. I don't know. Yeah. Yes. So we used to sit under a lignum-vitae tree outside. And I would say, look, I've been reading this, and I don't quite understand that she would explain to me and so on, but then I would go ahead and do it. And that's how I got my German A levels. And that's how I was able to be hired for the European Commission, because Spanish was not, the Spaniards were not yet members of the European Union, as it later became. But the Germans had been, because this is an organization which was set up immediately post-war, to try to avoid the war in Europe in the future by bringing together the economies of the main belligerents in the Second World War. So Germany, Belgium, France, Italy, the Netherlands, they came together and they were the, the core of what later became the, the European Union. And so German was a language from the beginning, but Spanish was not. So how did I get in there? Because I had German. German, well, at the time I took it up, would have been of no particular utility to me if people had asked what they're going to do with it. 
I wouldn't have been able to tell them. But that was another thing about Sanctuary, that the love of learning in itself was always encouraged. And you didn't ask yourself, what am I going to do with this? If it was something that you really were intrigued with, interested in, you were encouraged to pursue it. Because then you create your opportunities. You have a talent or you have a skill, then you find something to do with it. You don't start by looking for something to do. And so she was also encouraged independent thinking. And I think this is something that everybody here, uh, you know, appreciates the devotion of our teachers to us. I remember in other schools, children who were having difficulty were having to pay their same daytime teachers to give them extra lessons. This was never an issue at St. Hughes, certainly not in my time. If people were having difficulty in a class, the teacher said, okay, tomorrow afternoon, two o'clock, and so on, you come and I'm going to teach the class. There's no question of that. So this is what St. Hughes is part of what St. Hughes gave us. And I am inordinately grateful for it. And I am inordinately proud of you, the executive of the past students who put into practice, we see it daily, every, all these lessons that we learn from being at school here. And your devotion to the cause of the school is, is manifested every day. So congratulations and thank you very much. Thank you.